Okay, this is the video for section 5.1, and we're going to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. So, a polynomial is a finite sum of terms of the form a sub n times x to the nth power, where a is a real number and n is a whole number. So every polynomial consists of terms that are separated by addition and subtraction, and each term has a numerical coefficient. We've talked about that before. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable in each term. So the number a sub n is the leading coefficient, and a sub 0 is the constant term. So for example, if we have negative 2x squared minus 3 plus 5x plus 7x cubed. Remember the terms are things separated by addition and subtraction, and if it's a subtraction, it goes with the term because the term is negative. So terms in the polynomial, we have negative 2x squared, we have negative 3, we have 5x, and we have 7x cubed. So, let's see. For the coefficients, it's always the number in front of the variable. So we have negative 2, negative 3, 5, and 7. Now the coefficient on the highest power of x, so in this case our, the highest power of x is an x cubed. So its coefficient 7 is what we call the leading coefficient. And the constant term, so the number that doesn't have any x with it, is what we call either the constant or sometimes we call it the constant coefficient. Those are the same thing. Now it's easiest if we rewrite, which we didn't do, but it would be easiest if we rewrote our polynomial in descending powers of x. So the highest power of x is x cubed, so we would start with our 7x cubed. The next highest power is the x squared, so minus 2x squared, then plus 5x minus 3. And that just makes everything easier to be able to pick out the leading coefficient and the constant. So there are different types of polynomials. A monomial is a polynomial with exactly one term. So some examples of that are x, 3x squared, or we could have even negative 27x to the ninth. So a monomial just has one term. A binomial is a polynomial with exactly two terms. So for example, x plus 3, or x squared minus 1, or even 3x to the fifth plus 2x. Trinomials have three terms. So for example, we could have x squared plus 3x plus 2, or we could have 4x squared minus 4x plus 1, or we could even have x to the ninth minus 3x to the fifth minus 2x. So those are all examples of trinomials. So now we need to talk about the degree of a polynomial. To determine the degree of a polynomial, we have to determine the degree of each individual term. So the degree of a term in a polynomial is just the exponent. If a term has more than one variable, we add the exponents of all the variables to determine the degree. The degree of the whole polynomial is the same 
as that of the term that has the highest degree. So let's go back to our negative 2x squared minus 3 plus 5x plus 7x cubed. The negative 2x squared is of degree 2 because the exponent on the x is 2. Negative 3 is of degree 0 because it doesn't have an x at all, no variable. 5x, remember anytime you see a variable with no exponent, it has an invisible 1 exponent. So it's of degree 1 because its exponent is that invisible 1. And 7x cubed is of degree 3 because the x is to the third power. So the highest degree term is 3, so the degree of the polynomial is 3. So a polynomial is in standard form when each term is written in descending order of degree. And we already did that up above, but it's worth doing again. So we start with the highest power of x, which is 3 in this case. So we go 7x cubed. Okay, squared is the next power down, so minus 2x squared. Then the next one is 1, so that's our 5x term, minus 3. And now it's in standard form. Okay, let's go to a couple examples on the next page of adding and subtracting polynomials. So, if we add polynomials, we just drop any parentheses and then combine like terms. To subtract two polynomials, it's a little bit different because we have to distribute the negative sign through the polynomial that's being subtracted. So, for example, on number one, they're being added. So we can just drop the parentheses. So we have 4x squared plus 5x minus 2 plus a negative 5x squared minus 9x plus 15. And now we just combine like terms. So we have a 4x squared minus a 5x squared. So we'll combine those first. That gives us a negative 1x squared. Then we have a 5x and a negative 9x. So they combine to give us, see, 5 minus 9 is negative 4x. And then finally, we can combine our constant terms. So we have a negative 2 plus 15, which gives us a plus 13. OK, now on number 2, this one's a little bit sneakier. So we can just drop the parentheses on the first set. So we have 4x cubed minus 6x plus 1. Now we're subtracting everything in the second parentheses. So that means we have to distribute the negative sign to everything inside. So it changes the sign of everything. So we have a positive 15x cubed inside, which we have to change the sign. So it's minus 15x cubed plus 11x, but remember we have to change the sign, so it's minus 11x. And then we have a minus 2, but we're subtracting the negative 2, so that changes it to a plus 2. And now we can combine like terms. So 4x cubed minus 15x cubed gives us negative 11x cubed. Negative 6x minus 11x gives us minus 17x. And positive 1 plus 2 is a plus 3. So our final answer is 
negative 11x cubed minus 17x plus 3. Okay, that's it for this video. We'll pick up with sections 5.2 and 5.3 in the next video.